All right, here with more is the host of the co-host of The Five, Geraldo Rivera, and the host of Lawrence Jones' Cross Country. LJ is with us, and uh, Fox News contributor and former D.C. homicide detective Ted Williams. Uh, thank you all for being with us. LJ, um, let me start with you. You watch this tape. You see this tape. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people in law enforcement, and I was looking for this five guys there against one young man. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they have the advantage. They're pulling out their stun guns. They're pulling out pepper spray. They're, you know, they're, they're mad. They're angry. At no time did I hear anyone say, sir, sir, everybody calm down. We're not going to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. We, but we do have to take you into custody. We really need your cooperation. Tone could mean everything. I, I heard nothing but anger, like real anger. And you see the physicality here. We're talking about five on one. I, that part, I'm having a hard time. That is not the policing that I believe officers are trained in. You know, Sean, we've done this a lot. We, we, we review the facts, the evidence, and we don't rush the judgment. But you can't deny what you see on tape. And, that, and I'm not just talking for myself. I'm talking about the, the officers that I've been texting back and forth. Sean, when you brought me to the channel, I've been covering crime for a long time. So I, I know a lot of cops. Talk to them on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're all horrified. They want to wish their condolences to the Nichols family. But, Sean, there were several things in this video that just stood out to me. You come to the scene out of control, out of control. You disobey uh, police policy. You don't just roll up on a car like that. You don't know what the suspect could possibly have. You put yourself at risk, and then you slaughtered the suspect. You, you started to spray each other with, with the spray because you're not using it the right way. You use your taser the wrong way. You use your batons the wrong way. You didn't restrain the suspect the right way. I mean, there's just basic police protocol. And then I just can't get past the fact that you held the suspect up and you beat him. You took turns. You used your baton in the wrong way. And then I just can't help but be annoyed by the fact that they fist bumped at the end. So there were many layers to this. Basic police protocol was broken right here. They were on a power trip. And he didn't have to die that night. He was crying out for his mom. Again, they, they have the right to defend themselves in the court of law. But just from a tactic standpoint, basic poli police protocol. Sean, I started off when I was 16 years old as a police explorer. I know protocol. And they broke every rule in the book. You know, Geraldo, I, you, LJ's right. He's crying for his mom at one point. He's, he's literally getting punched and kicked and pepper sprayed uh, and tasered. And, you know, there's five cops there. They're supposed to be the trained professionals in, in a situation. Look, he was obviously scared, uh, obviously felt they were being overly aggressive from, from the get-go and said so. Hey, guys, there's a lot going on here early on. The, there was nobody there that tried to even defuse it. And then, you know, to watch this one cop just come walking in disgusted and just kick this kid in the head, not once, but twice. You know, a kick in the head kills people, Geraldo. Mm -hmm. You know, Sean, uh, this wasn't five cops. This was a wolf pack. This was a cowardly, sadistic bunch of brutes. Who, who murdered a man right before our very eyes. That's the most eerie thing about it. You, you're watching a, a dead man screaming for his mother. I mean, it is outrageous. It is the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. And where the hell was a police sergeant? Where was a supervisor? You have these five macho cops out there who I don't know how much training they had. They're... they're instinct was to lash out, was to, was to inflict pain, was to torture this young man to death. It is really, it makes me want to puke. It is the most sickening thing I've ever seen in terms of, of police brutality. And, and the way that the one cop kind of winds up and then goes 10, 15 mm -hmm. feet to land a blow, a kick to the victim's head, and then another kick, and then the other one takes a turn. And he's obviously 
defenseless. I mean, it is, you know, it is really, yeah, I, I, when I first heard the charges of murder too, I said, wow, that's pretty serious this early in the game. But when you see this, it is clear that this was reckless disregard for human life. This is, this is murder too at least, Sean. Ted Williams, I, I, like Geraldo, like LJ, I know a lot of police officers. And I'm watching, and I, I, I see five cops around him, and I find it almost spectacularly unbelievable to me that five trained officers, obviously lacking in a lot of training, that they can't cuff one young man, and they can't get control of the situation. And they all let their—seemingly, all of them, most of them anyway, let their tempers get the better of them. They took it so personally. No, it, There was no attempt to defuse the situation in any way, um, which I believe easily could have been done. There, there was even simple jujitsu 101 maneuvers could have, you know, enabled the police to, to easily cuff this guy. But none of them seem to have any of that training at all. The only training that, that they seem to be—they only seem to be trained to be angry. And I'm not sure where the anger came from. There are always going to be people during an arrest that don't want to be arrested. That is part of the job. But them doing it professionally has to happen. That didn't happen here. Why? Well, you asked an excellent question. You have to first go back and ask, where was the humanity of these police officers? The first thing we see in the first video, they are coming up aggressively to this man's car, and they don't talk to the man. They rip him out of his automobile, and they immediately start pepper spraying him. And then, Sean, if you go to the video four that was on the lamppost, you see how inhumane these officers are. They're kicking this man in the head. They're beating him. They're saying, show me your hands or give me your hands. While they're still, the man is in pain and he's calling for his mother. And he says initially, when they took him out of that car, Sean, he said, why? I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Or oh, Sean, this is just terribly outrageous. But, Sean, let me make sure we are clear here. Black men and women who are dead and children are crying from the grave. We didn't do anything. They, this is an excellent example, unfortunately, what has happened to black people throughout the history of this country. And I'm very, very upset about these four or five black officers, black officers treating another black man the way they treated this man. This was, you don't even treat a dog this way. This was just unhumane, and I think Geraldo is right. Where in the hell was the supervisor? Why wasn't the supervisor there on the scene supervising this situation? What, 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 you have to ask yourself, how where, do you where drag was the a man there, there wasn't and one you of these drag five him officers, Ted? But, Ted, there wasn't one of these officers I'm that sorry? didn't have enough sense training to stand back, objectively realize everyone's getting out of control, call for calm, let their professionalism take over, talk to the, the suspect, talk him down, talk calmly. Say, it's, it's going to be all right. Nobody wants to get hurt here. We want to make sure that we, we take care of you as well. We have our job to do. Help Sean, us do our job. Tone, cadence, they you know, all of that matters in a moment like that. You're, You're absolutely right, Sean. They got to the oh. crime scene. They, they were hey, when they got they, there, Sean. And, and, and can I just say this? Because I think it's important to say this. Cops are the only profession that are judged by the individuals, the very few that do the wrong thing. They didn't just steal someone's life. They set the profession back. Prepare for months of rage. Prepare for cops to be demonized over the actions of these people. They took this man's life. They're the cops, the 95 percent 
that go out there and put a badge on every single day, you got to remember, Sean, we're already dealing with limited people in the profession. Way to go. Way to set us back. Because and, and now we're going to have to deal with Lawrence, let me go some here. people stepping back as a result of this. And, Lawrence, Lawrence, this is me, what's uh, going you know, on. In the profession right now, Ted, we've go got ahead. a lot of experienced police officers who are leaving the profession, and they are leaving, a, and you've got these inexperienced cops out there that are doing the job. This is what's also going on in the profession. And yes, you're right, Lawrence, this sets the profession back. There are good men and women who put that uniform on every day and go out here and serve and protect the communities. These officers do not deserve to wear the uniform of Memphis, Tennessee, as police not officers. Not a chance. Geraldo, Geraldo, in this particular case, the, the suspect was African-American. The five cops involved were African-Americans. Uh, there's a so-called news network. It's a comedy channel, I guess. You have Van Jones saying that the police that killed Tyree Nichols were black, but they might still have been driven by racism. He says black people are not immune to anti-black messages. One of the sad facts about anti-black racism is that black people ourselves are not immune to its pernicious effects. And society's message that black people are inferior, unworthy, and dangerous is pervasive. And it's not just Van Jones. It's the Communication Workers of America. It's NPR. It's Al Sharpton. It's, you know, the attorney Ben Crump, who— who our, our colleague Jono uh, uh, talked to earlier tonight. Um, where does that come from here? You know, Sean, Memphis, Tennessee is where, tragically, in April 1968, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Since then, the city has been roiled by racial tension. It is now a predominantly black city with soaring crime. The police force is consistently undermanned. They are desperate for officers. They are searching for recruits everywhere. I don't know whether they've relaxed their standards or what the result is. All I know is what my eyes tell me after a half century in this business dealing with law and order and, and cops of all, of all colors. What I see here you know, uh, are yeah. men who are I just they they reduce themselves to savage to I used the term wolf pack earlier. I this it was so uncontrolled. It was so undisciplined. It was so slanderously unprofessional. And Lawrence is right and Ted is Ted's anguish is is poignant and Lawrence is right about setting back the shortage that we have now with cops after George Floyd and, and all, all these other incidents that have happened is so chronic. What the result of this will be is that that neighborhood will be more resentful of the cops. There will be more crime. There will be harder for them to recruit officers. This is a, this is a body blow to law and order, to race relations. This is really awful. But if the protesters use this Geraldo, as an excuse so, Geraldo, let me, to, let me to ask inflict you, though, more pain, when you say it's a body blow, Geraldo, when you say it's a body blow to racism, where's the racial component here? Now, there are good cops and there are bad cops. And to me, it has nothing to do with race. There are professional cops, as, as Ted said, as LJ said, as you said, that get up, put on that uniform. They know they're risking their lives, but they go to work every day to serve their communities and protect their communities. The, uh, that transcends race to me. And in this case, there are just so many people trying to make this racial. Is this case racial? Because I don't see it. The, the point is, Sean, I, I agree that what this does is strip race from the question of police training and police brutality. But you cannot avoid the reality that these were five black men, young black men, macho, spree de corps, 
filled with verve and grit. That's not what and I asked you, though. they joined the police force. Is this racial? And now look what they have done. But, look, look, but th th my point is this. Look what they have done now. What, look what they have done. The, the blow that right, they let have, me go to LJ. have struck to the community. Uh, uh, it's a, it's, let me... Let me, let me say this, I'll ask you the same question. A, a Your humanity. thoughts on the racial component, to me... This is a humanity me, issue. It's about... Sorry, I'm sorry, uh, LJ, go ahead. It's a humanity issue, Sean. I, I, I see where you're going with it. This, this, this is not value, va having value for human life. This didn't have to go this way. Right. Whether he resisted or not, they didn't value his life. And apparently they didn't value their own life the way that they showed up to the scene. You don't go up to a car that way. That's basic police one-on-one. And look, I, I agree with my colleague Ted, training is an issue within some of the police departments right now, especially when it comes to um, the, the numbers that we have right now. But let's not be confused here. These gentlemen were a part of an elite unit, the Scorpions, okay? That is equivalent to New York City's anti-crime unit. It takes grit to be on there. OK, I understand the job that they have to do, which is why they should have had the proper training to conduct that stop. And they didn't no. do it the right way. It was selfish on multiple levels to the cops that serve that do the job the right way. But it's also if we want to, if, since people want to put race in in this, Sean, every black man knows about the talk that our father gives us, what you're supposed to do when you're stopped by a police officer. We have gentlemen that got the talk as well as our black police officers. So they just didn't value life. They didn't care about any of that yeah. in that moment. All right, LJ, thank you. Uh, Ted Williams, thank you. Geraldo, thank you. We go hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.